Thanks for dropping by, Can't Let Her Die DIY. I'm just bringing in my battery. Uh, it's a cold day out there, and I uh, like to maintain the batteries that, that uh, go in my trailers. The trailer there, so uh, leave it out in that cold weather. It'll be dead in no time. So if you found this channel, found this video, you must be having problems with your parking brake. Are you? Is your parking brake dragging? I know mine is. That's what this is, a 2005 Chevy Colorado. It's got 428,000 kilometers on it, 18 years old. And the parking brake, it's dragging, it's staying on, it's not releasing. You're probably having the same problem. I have a few tricks that you can use, uh, things that you can do to release that, to free up that dragging parking brake. You might want to take a, take a look at this video. And if you're a Colorado owner, or a Canyon, or Izuzu, or even a Hummer. The problem that I have here that I show you here is specific to your vehicles as well. So this is going to be a good video. You're going to like it. And the best part of it, we're going to get dirty. Oh yeah. So why don't you throw on your old clothes. I'll throw on my old clothes. Meet me back here in five minutes and we'll get inside that tire that's sticking in the back. We'll look at the cables. We'll pull off cables. We'll see what's going on. We're looking for rust. We're doing it all here. And I got a couple of quick Good tricks you may want to use and it costs you nothing. A free fix. When do you ever hear that? You want to see the tools you'll need if you decide to do this job? Well you're going to need a jack and a jack stand. Never try to get under there without using a jack stand. Uh, the BFH, big friendly hammer. That's fun. Uh, we got a torque wrench here. We got a breaker bar. Two foot breaker bar. Uh, you may not need that. It depends how tight your lug nuts are. A couple of screwdrivers there, both flat. What is this? We got uh, a zip tie. So you're going to need a couple of zip ties, an old garden hose, a spring. Oh, this is getting interesting. Seven inch spring. Uh, we've got a couple of products here. We got uh, seal all and we got gasket maker. maker. You're going to need one of those, either or. Uh, we got a quarter inch. Uh, mini drive there with an extender and an 8 millimeter and a 10 millimeter socket. These come in handy. You don't really need them, but uh, I like them and, and the, they appear in the video. A method of cutting the hose with a knife. Uh, a 3 8 ratcheting drive with a, a little extender and a 19 millimeter socket for the lug nuts. Uh, what is this? We got a bungee cord. We got PB Blaster, my friend, and our other friend, Anti Seize Grease, silver grade. And of course, we got brake parts cleaner. You may not need all these. You'll see it in the video. Okay, I'm glad you're back. Let's get you caught up. I've taken off the hubcap, and with the 19 millimeter socket, I removed the lug nuts. I have the wheel off. That is after jacking and using jack stands, of course. <laughs> I have other videos on that, how to jack it up safely. You guys can uh, refer to that if you don't already know. We'll put the wheel underneath the vehicle in case the jack stand does fail. This, this will be a secondary level of safety. It'll only fall as far as the tire. Anyway, here we are. This is the passenger side rear wheel. If I get you in here, I'll show you what I think is going on. This may be what's happening with your truck. This is the hub rotor, and this is the parking brake cable. comes in here, and it's attached to a brake shoe that's on this side. Brake shoe, when you apply the parking brake, it, there's a pivot mechanism that pushes out on the brake shoe. shoe. The brake shoe touches the inside of this drum, and it, it stops the vehicle, prevents the vehicle from moving. So when you release the pedal, it releases the uh, pivoting point there, and these shoes are supposed to go back, pull away from this hub, and that would allow the wheel to turn. Now what my situation is, uh, my parking brake is dragging. So, uh, right, it is not releasing. It is staying on there, and it's difficult to get it to release. So the spring is not functioning, or that pivoting point is uh, corroded and it's not functioning, or this line is corroded and it's not uh, 
releasing. What I can do to uh, make my brakes not drag is just to pull on this. I can just yank on that. When I release it, it uh, is enough for that spring to activate and pivot properly, pull, pull the brake shoes away from this. So I believe it's just a lubrication issue maybe. Some brake pad material, the dust in there has gummed up the uh, pivoting mechanism or the spring, or maybe something is catching in there. We're going to find out. So we need to get inside there and see what the heck is going on, because it's only speculation at this point. So the first thing you want to do is let everybody know you're coming. So we'll knock on the door and make sure everything in there wakes up. If something is seized, a good tap with the BFH, Big Friendly Hammer, just a few little taps will sometimes jar it free. So that, and already I feel it is uh, a lot looser. What we really want is for that spring to fully pull those shoes away from the drum so that we can get this drum off. And now I got slight movement of this drum. And since this has a tendency to drag, they may have worn, the shoes may have worn grooves into the drum. Now it's hard to get the drum out over those grooves. A few taps fixes that real good. Notice the uh, brake dust in there, and there's a small rust groove right there, going around the very edge, if you can see that. Brake shoe, other brake shoe, right, lots of material on there, so it's not worn out, lots of material on those, they, they aren't very old. So now is a great time to hit it with brake parts cleaner. We'll spray down in here. We got our box underneath to catch all the, because uh, it makes quite a mess. And this will wash all that powder. It will dissolve the brake, brake shoe powder and uh, make it into, dissolve it into a fluid, a black fluid, and will drain it right out of this whole mechanism. So it will clean your brakes. Spring down here, which we suspect is not functioning properly. And it doesn't matter how much you have, you always run out. Uh, always have an extra bottle, because we are done. Haha, another can of brake parts cleaner. Uh, I really don't care what brand it is. They all seem to be the same to me. They both work, they all work very well, so whatever's cheapest is what I recommend. This one's got a better nozzle though. Right in there. Clean that right out. You know, after a couple of years, this may be all that it really needs. But that's wishful thinking. Okay, take a look at this. Already we have way better movement on these brake shoes. You pull them out, they snap right back in. They are working the way it's supposed to. But I want you to know, I want to show you something. If you pull it out, if you pull it out this way and then this way a little bit, it does catch on this, this piece of this tab here. It's supposed to sit behind the tab. It can touch on that. I just want to zoom you in here a little bit. If you see when I pull out on this brake shoe, you see right there, yeah, you can see it, right there, there is a line of wear. This brake shoe is rubbing against this pivoting arm. There's the spring that pulls on this and it pivots up here, pushes out on there and there. So, so that's how that functions. It is wearing a little bit of there, so we need to apply grease right there. That's a sliding point. This is a sliding point right there. It can catch on the edge of that and not retract. That's what I think is happening. If we put grease on that, 
it's more likely to slide in like that. So that's the way it should go. Sometimes it'll do this and catch on that, which will drag on your on your drum. Right? Or if you get enough powder in there, around there, and maybe just that is enough to slow down the retraction so it doesn't snap back like it does when it's perfectly clean and when they're perfectly new. So after two years, that's sort of what starts to happen on these things. So I'm thinking the only thing this really needs is grease applied right there, anti-seize grease right there. For good lubrication, anti-seize grease right there where it rubs right there. That is the ticket, that is the path forward that I'm taking, and we'll see if that works. So to make this a lot easier, I'm going to take my uh, grandfather's 100 year old screwdriver, been through a war or two, I'm going to pull it on the shoe and I'm going to stick it right there. And that will hold my shoe in an outward position, thereby exposing this rubbing surface that I need to apply grease to. And exposing the surface in there, which is the other area that I need to apply grease to. So as long as my screwdriver stays, stay there. Everything will be okay. Life will be good. Anti-seize grease that I have hanging around the shop. Silver grade. A little dab will do you. You don't have to break the bank. Just a little dab right in there. And uh, right in there. And I'll leave a link, a product link, in the uh, video description uh, from Amazon where you can just click on it and they will send it right to your door. Have it ready for you on your day off so you don't forget to go pick it up. Because that's the problem. Once you get your vehicle all jacked up, it's hard to go get the products that you need so you end up doing it without the necessary products. And uh, that is problematic. That's good for that side. I'll do the same thing to the other shoe. Right? Because it's uh, the other tires on the ground, I can't rotate this all the way, but it is sliding on the brake shoes. So the brake shoes are not grabbing onto this. The brake shoes, I hope, will release on their own with that spring in there because there's less rust, there's less black powder from the brake shoes, there's uh, no metal to metal contact rubbing up against each other, it's metal to grease. So all those conditions help that to slide better the way it should. The next thing we need to do, inspect the parking brake lines all the way from the pedal all the way to the here. Okay, I jacked her up and now what we gotta do is take the tire off and remove the splash guards in behind so that we can get, attack the front parking brake cable where it goes up through the floor to the parking brake pedal. That front one, that's the one that's problematic for me and for you. There's a tendency to rub and it has a tendency to rust up. I'll show you. Okay, what we gotta do now is remove the Splash guard with these pins, one there, one there, one there, one over there, and we may even remove the mud guard. So give her a little spray with WD-40 or any other penetrating oil. Let's get going. I find these C-clip pliers really good for removing these plastic pins without breaking them. Get the center part out. The center part of that clip. Clips, get in there like that and pull it out. And this should come out with it. Okay, let's take a look. Get you in there. Reposition my light. We can get in there. There's where the parking cable comes from the truck. Goes down, bring it around, and you can see it's getting a little crusty there on that clamp. I got my pointer uh, right there, right where it pivots, does that 90 degree angle. And I've been uh, hitting it with PB Blaster. 
on the other side. So the cut, the uh, failed part of this cable is on the other side. You can't quite see. You can just see the swollen uh, rubber sheathing. On the other side, it's cut like I showed you before. So this PB blaster is draining into the cable and it's freeing up the cable. So that's where I have it. The problem is the cable is freed up and it will move now, but the spring is not enough to pull that back. The spring of the pedal is not enough to retract the pedal. So what I have to do is come down here and retract it myself. Now this is what happens when I depress the parking brake pedal. If you want to zoom in, you see the pedal down there? I take my foot and I depress it. Now I got a lot of resistance there. I can feel it working. It works really well. Now when I depress, hit the uh, pedal release, right? Now I feel, and it goes down easy till it gets right there. Now I was getting it almost to the ground before I got any resistance. Now there's a resistance right there. I depress it again, comes all the way back. No, no resistance until I get there. So I am freeing up that cable more and more. The more I do it, the more I get movement and that PB blaster gets to work further and further down that cable, right? But it doesn't sling back the whole way. So that's what you can do. Just keep applying the PB blaster and keep sliding that cable back and forth inside the uh, rubber sheathing. But the other thing you can do is, is this. Now let's find the parking brake cable equalizer. It is below the door handle of the driver's door. If you follow my pointer down here, it's pretty much in the middle of your driver's side door. You get down here, right here is your parking brake equalizer. So the first cable comes down here and it's there and then the two cables here go to your two rear wheels. Parking brakes, right? So if you get down here, we've depressed the pedal but it doesn't return. Okay, I'm under the truck and my beautiful assistant, who doesn't want to be named, uh, is going to depress the uh, parking brake pedal. So go ahead. Okay, now release. Okay, so I get a release, I get one inch. I wasn't getting anything before I tr put the PB blaster on it and uh, I pumped it like a uh, hundred times. Do it again, huh? Depress and release. So we're getting some movement on there, but it's not enough. So we've depressed the uh, parking brake ca cable and released it, and it snapped back about an inch. But that's not far enough. That's not adequate. So you can grab your hands onto the equalizer and pull. And you see that? I get it another, another inch. So uh, it needs to come back about uh, two and a half inches. So that's one way you can release your parking brake. If you do that, uh, you can play, play with that back and forth and try to get it to release. It's getting better and better all the time. Sometimes it releases all the way, but m most of the time it doesn't. It only comes back an inch. Now that may be enough to pass the test, but uh, I get another idea. Guess what I have? In my shop I have these springs. I don't know what they came off of, I can't remember. It might have came off a dryer, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I have these springs and they're perfect for this. They're uh, seven and it goes to about seven and a quarter, seven and a half inches. And it is, uh, the diameter is, mm, it is about, uh, it's about five eighths. But these are perfect. Check this out. Now all we really need is a stronger spring on here. So uh, I do have these springs I showed you. And if you can clip them in here, st instead of waiting for a new cable to arrive, I want to get this done so I can clip right in there like that. And guess what? I ha just happened to have two of these. And I'm not sure where they came from, but... I knew they would, I keep things because I know I'll, eat, I'll need them for something someday. So I put it right there. Now we got extra. When that depressed that pedal, 
it'll pull it this way. It'll really, this will put a lot of resistance pulling it back. And when I release, it'll snap that all the way back and thereby uh, passing the inspection. I'm in the truck, depressing. Oh uh, yeah, it's got a lot more force there to depress it. There, snap, release. I can feel by the pedal that it's working a lot better. Over and over again. And the more I do it, the more PB Blaster gets down all through there. Oh yeah, she feels great right now. That is the fix. You got this, and that is worth its weight in gold. I relocated you to my workbench now because we got the parking brake working, so it's working really good, but we need to prevent water from getting back into that crack again and uh, rusting out that front cable. So we're doing some preventive maintenance right now, a correction. I'm going to take an old uh, water hose that's no longer working, it's leaking and that sort of stuff. If you cut off like a four inch segment there, it even has a nice little line here. We can just cut right down that line without cutting my fingers. Sort of like that. We're going to use this as a protective covering over that brake cable. So the rubber sheathing is worn through, right? Well, this is essentially the same thing, rubber, rubber sheathing. So we're going to put that over top of the uh, brake cable, spin it around so it'll be rubbing on this side now. And then we're going to seal it with, we've got two options here that I have in the shop. There's seal all. This is really good stuff. This is uh, becomes like a rubberized, and it's really good for uh, gas tanks and that sort of stuff. So it's gas or oil resistant and it also keeps out water but if you if you have gasket maker rtv gasket maker that'll work as well so i'm going to go with the seal all because i love this product and uh, we're just going to put seal all all through the black part of that hose and then we're going to wrap it around like that and we may uh, seal it up with uh, a couple of zip ties and then we'll have a protective sheathing over top our parking brake cable, which essentially cost us nothing. We don't need a new parking brake cable. We just need to free it up and then re-apply uh, new sheathing, makeshift sheathing, so that we can prevent water from getting back in there, causing a problem all over again. Let's do this. You got this. You got old water hoses hanging around. You can do this too. Let's go. So let's take a look at what we got here. So that's sort of what it is. Now I need to cut that uh, tie off. So we'll rotate this and uh, make sure it uh, gives maximum protection on the other side of this. So I'll snip this off to make it look better. And then also there's another spot where it was rubbing. So I've crawled in underneath the uh, brake caliber, the front driver's side. That's my splash guard, my light. And now I'm looking at the repair from this angle. You can see now if you follow that uh, if you follow that right underneath here, there, I got the light in the right spot. Now you can see that uh, up in there is the original repair. It was rubbing in a spot there, but it was also rubbing against this part of the cab mount right there, right against there. So I put a section of tubing in there, and now we just need to. Uh, that is sealed now. And snip this. With your wire cutters, you could have snipping the old zip ties as well. There it is. So that is a is a pretty good fix, I would say. It uh, right? Ideally it's better to replace the whole cable, of course, with the with the pedal lever. Uh, so it's a brake parking lever, but uh, if you want to do this uh, free fix without any cost to you, uh, this is pretty good too. I got you inside the truck now. I just want to show you, to buy that uh, front parking brake cable, you're going to have to buy the whole mechanism, the whole pedal mechanism. Here's the brake pedal there. 
that's the mechanism right in here. And there's the cable that goes down through the firewall right there on the other side where we've been watching, you've been seeing it. I can't find this parking brake, this front parking brake cable anywhere. So you have to buy this whole assembly, this pedal assembly. If you do find a front uh, parking brake cable, be careful because what they're trying to sell you is this, this release cable right here. Can you see that? The parking brake release cable that goes to, goes to this handle right here. Parking brake release handle. Okay, I got my uh, mud flap on, I got the splash guards on, got these uh, push pins back down the way they are. We got the tire on there, now we're going to lower it to the ground and torque it down to specs. 100 foot pounds, that's what we're going to do. So I'm glad you guys came along in this video, I hope this video is a good one for you. Uh, it shows you a few different options to get that parking brake working. Uh, there's an option where you spend no money, I love that option, so do you, I know you do. Anyway, let's lower this baby down. Let's uh, finish this job. And if you guys really like this video, uh, give me the thumbs up, will you? And uh, I'd really love if you subscribe if you haven't already done it and be notified so you know the next time this truck breaks down, you can get a little heads up what's coming with your vehicle. So we'll crank that up. We'll slide this out of the way. And uh, bring in a lot of dirt with it. <laughs> and uh, we'll lower this puppy down slowly. Nice. And as always, never forget to uh, torque these puppies down to spec, which is a hundred foot pounds. I uh, love that sound, don't you? With your 19 millimeter socket and your torque wrench in a crisscross pattern, of course, like always, not too tight, not too loose, but just right. So you can get them on if you ever have a get them off if you ever have a flat tire. And so sort of like that. And then if you got a hubcap like this, it's, there's a certain position that it goes back on. So don't break your hubcap putting it on. It doesn't go that way. It snaps on just like that. You got this, you do. Love have making videos. Love you guys. Keep coming. Let's keep having fun.